Hi there everyone, um, my name is Laura. I am the Associate Director for Environmental Ministry and I am here for a lovely evening of chicken bedtime. This is a special double feature of chicken bedtime because we currently have two chicken coops. Um, this is our junior chicken coop um, which contains what are our teenage chickens. Um, they were babies over the summer so if we have any campers out there watching this who remember doing a chick check, these are those chicks they're all grown up now um and so they've been out free ranging they are about to head to bed so i'm gonna read them a bedtime story and then after their story i will head over to the other coop and read to the adult chickens these chickens are not in the same coop as the adults yet they will get to be over there shortly um in just a few weeks they are um three months old now and when they get to be um, about another month they will get to go into the big chicken coop. Um, we wait until they are big enough to defend themselves um, because if you've ever heard the term pecking order, that is from derived from chicken habits. Um, they do have a structure of hierarchy and so they uh, do tend to be a little mean in get, figuring that structure out. And so we just want these ones to be big enough to be able to participate in that system well. So they're over here for now. They are lovely little animals, so they're free-ranging. I'll read to them. They're gonna go to bed, and then I'll take us over to the adult coop and read them a different story. So, tonight we are going to be reading The Other Way to Listen by Bird Baylor and Peter Parnall. I used to know an old man who could walk by any cornfield and hear the corn sing. Teach me, I'd say, when we passed on by. I never said a word while he was listening. Just tell me how you learned how to hear that corn. And he'd say, it takes a lot of practice. You can't be in a hurry. And I'd say, I have the time. I'll show you some pictures, they're a little hard to see. He was so good at listening. Once, he heard wildflower seeds burst open, beginning to grow underground. That's hard to do. He said he was just lucky to have been by himself up there in that canyon after the rain. He said it was the quietest place he'd ever been, and he stayed there long enough to understand the quiet. I said, I bet you were surprised when you heard those seeds. But he said, no, I wasn't surprised at all. It seemed like the most natural thing in the world he just smiled, remembering. Another time, he heard a rock kind of murmur good things to a lizard. I was there. He saw the lizard sunning on a rock. Of course we stopped. The old man said, I wonder how that lizard feels about the rock it's sitting on and how the rock feels about the lizard. He always asked himself hard questions that take a while to answer. You can see the lizard that's sitting over here. We leaned against another rock. A long time passed, and then he said, Did you hear that? They like each other fine. I said, I didn't hear anything. He said, Sometimes everything being right kind of makes a sound. Just like now, it wasn't much more than a good feeling that I heard from that old rock. Weren't you surprised to hear it? I always had to ask. He said, not a bit. It seemed like the most natural thing in the world. I said, I wish I'd heard it too. He said he thought I might someday. He told me how a friend of his once heard a whole sky full of stars when she was seven. And later on, when she was 83, she heard a cactus blooming in the dark. At first, she didn't know she, what she was hearing. She found it by just following the sound. There were 20 flowers on one cactus, and they were all white as the moon. The old man said, most people never hear those things at all. The MVPs are walking by right now. Well, not all of them. Bracken and Hannah are over there. <laughs> um, all right, anyway, moving on. <laughs> I said, I wonder why. He said, 
they just don't take the time you need for something that important. I said, I'll take the time, but first you have to teach me. I'd like to if I could, he said, but the thing is, you have to learn it from the hills and the ants and the lizards and the weeds and the things like that. They do the teaching around here. Just give me a clue on how I start, I said. And so he said, do this, get to know one thing as well as you can. It should be something small. Don't start with a mountain. Don't start with the whole Pacific Ocean. Start with one seed pod or one dry weed or one horned toad or one handful of dirt or one sandy wash. I say, I'll take the sandy wash. He said he started with one tree. Every morning of his life, when he was young, he climbed a cottonwood and sat there listening. He told me it was worth the time. He said, trees are very honest and they don't care much for fancy people. And he said he doesn't know of anything he ever did as important as sitting in that tree. Tell me everything you can, I said. He said, well, you have to respect that tree, or hill, or whatever you're with. Take a horned toad, toad for example. If you're thinking, or if you think you're better than a horned toad, you'll never hear its voice, even if you sit in the, in the sun for forever. And he said, don't be ashamed to learn from the bugs, or the sand, or anything. I won't, I said. He thought of one more thing. It's good to walk with people but sometimes go alone. That way, he said, you can always stop and listen at the right time. I'll remember everything, I said, and I did, but nothing worked. I thought there must be something wrong with me because I only heard wind and quail and coyotes and doves, just things that anyone could hear. I almost gave up trying. Of course, I still went walking in my hills, in fact, I used to sing to I used to sing to them a lot. I thought that since they wouldn't sing to me, I'd just sing to them instead. The day I'm telling you about now, the day I'm telling you about now, I was singing and the whole song was this. Hello hills, hello hills, hello hills, hello. That was after I had been away five days, and I had missed those hills five days. I went out earlier than usual. You know, how everything looks new at sunrise? Well, all those hills were looking new. I was just walking there, walking where I always walk, but that morning I kept thinking, here I am. And whatever happened, or whatever way I happened to go, I was always right. I climbed the rocky side, not the path. The rocky side is steeper, but I like it best. And anyway, that's where I found my three hawk feathers. I stood at the top where I always stand, looking down. Hello, hills. Hello, hills. Hello, hills. Hello. All I know is, suddenly, I wasn't the only one singing. The hills are singing, too. I stopped. I didn't move for maybe an hour. I never listened so hard in my life. Of course, their kind of singing isn't loud. It isn't any sound you can explain. It isn't made with words. You couldn't write it down. All I can say is it came straight up from those dark, shiny lava rocks, humming as it moved like wind. It seemed to be the oldest sound in the world. All I can say is, I was standing in the middle of that sound at 7 o'clock in the morning, just thinking, here I am, and thinking, listen, and not even being surprised. It seemed like the most natural thing in the world.
I'm going to leave you here to listen to these chickens for a little while. <laughs>